Could GLP-1 medications like semaglutide be the hidden secret for patients with schizophrenia facing metabolic risks? Well, a new study published in JAMA Psychiatry suggests that semaglutide might be the secret sauce we've been missing. But where does a dietary intervention like ketogenic therapy fit into this treatment paradigm? You see, people living with schizophrenia often face a difficult trade-off. So-called second-generation antipsychotics like Cyprexa, Seroquel, and Risperdal are among the most common medications for managing symptoms of psychosis experienced in schizophrenia and related disorders. And like many psychiatric medications, they can vary in their effectiveness, but they also tend to come with heavy metabolic side effects. Weight gain, prediabetes, even type 2 diabetes all occur far too often from these medications, and they increase the risk of cardiovascular disease and even dying prematurely. And unfortunately, it's pretty clear that the traditional lifestyle advice to eat less and exercise more has had little to no success. But a new study seems to offer a helpful breakthrough. So researchers in Denmark tested semaglutide, a GLP-1 receptor agonist that's used in Wagovi and Ozempic. They tested it in 154 patients with schizophrenia who've been on antipsychotics for at least six months with overweight or obesity and already showing signs of prediabetes. Participants were randomized to receive either semaglutide once weekly, titrated up to one milligram, or a placebo for 30 weeks. And there were several results that kind of stood out. So first, blood sugar control improved, not worsened, but improved. The hemoglobin A1C dropped by almost half a percent of absolute value in the semaglutide group compared with placebo. And even more striking, 81% of participants on the semaglutide achieved normal hemoglobin A1C, so no longer showing signs of prediabetes versus just 19% on placebo. And there was also significant weight loss. Patients lost an average of 9.2 kilograms, about 20 pounds with the semaglutide, while the placebo group saw minimal changes. Now, I gotta admit, I found it interesting that there wasn't appreciable weight gain in the placebo group, which tends to happen with these antipsychotics, but it may have to do with the fact that they had already been on the antipsychotics for at least six months. So, so maybe they already experienced the bulk of their weight gain, but that's all speculation. So, but regardless, the weight loss in the GLP-1 group was substantial. Now those in the GLP-1 also saw a better cholesterol profile consistent with improved metabolic health. So HDL went up by about 11 milligrams per deciliter, triglycerides fell by nearly 30 milligrams per deciliter. But perhaps most importantly, at least for the patients, was there was improved physical quality of life with no worsening of mental quality of life. And that's important. The psychiatric benefits were no better but no less, and their overall quality of life was improved. So that's you know probably what the patients are most interested in. Now, as expected, GI symptoms were more common in the GLP-1 group, but serious adverse events did not differ significantly from placebo. And the dropout was actually higher in the placebo group. All right, so why does this study matter? And what other data do we have on this topic? Well, for people with schizophrenia, weight gain and metabolic risk aren't just an inconvenience. They're a leading driver of early death. And this trial suggests that semaglutide could change that story. But the question remains, what happens long-term, right? Will the benefits persist beyond the treatment? And what about the cost of care and the access to GLP-1s? How long can they stay on them? All those questions. So we have to ask, what else could similarly help? And I can't help but think about the use of ketogenic therapy. One of the first publications on this was a case series by Dr. Albert Denon in France, where he took 31 of his longtime patients with essentially treatment-resistant depression, bipolar disorder, or schizophrenia, and he saw a dramatic metabolic and psychiatric benefit just by having them eat a ketogenic diet. So not only did their metabolic and physical health improve, but they had improvements in their various psychiatric scores on par with standard of care medications. And there's also the pilot study by Dr. Shabani Sethi and colleagues from Stanford University, where they started individuals with bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, or major depressive disorder on a ketogenic diet in addition to their usual care, similar to Dr. Denon. And like Dr. Denon, they found dramatic improvements in both metabolic health and their psychiatric symptoms. In fact, 100% of the patients with metabolic syndrome saw resolution of that condition. And 100% of those who were fully adherent to the diet were deemed to be in remission from their psychiatric condition. Now, both of these studies were small pilot studies with mixed diagnoses, but, but the dramatic results across diagnoses, including schizophrenia, are kind of hard to ignore. And there are other ongoing trials specifically looking at ketogenic therapy for schizophrenia at UCSF and another at James Cook University in Australia, and likely even more on the way. So we're about to see an explosion really of data regarding the metabolic and psychiatric benefits of ketogenic therapy.
But even just knowing what we know now with the data and clinical experience we have, it seems clear there are two effective treatments for the metabolic side effects of antipsychotic medications, GLP-1 agonists and ketogenic therapy. Now, personally, in terms of cost and side effects, I feel ketosis is likely the clear winner. And the data showing dramatically improved psychiatric symptoms set it apart as well, but they don't have to be mutually exclusive, right? There's, there's room for potential combined use. I envision a world where ketogenic therapy is considered first-line treatment along with antipsychotics for schizophrenia and related disorders, and perhaps using GLP-1s as adjunctive, maybe short-term treatment for those who need additional help or don't see enough benefit from ketosis. There isn't a one-size-fits-all treatment for everyone, so the, the more options we have, the better, with ketogenic therapy and GLP-1s each having a role. Future studies and clinical experience will continue to hash this out where they each fit in, but for now, it's encouraging to know that hope exists, right? Effective treatments exist to combat the metabolic consequences of psychiatric medications, specifically antipsychotics. We don't have to just accept that as being the case. So what do you think? Which would you go to for treatment, right? What would be your go-tos? Ketogenic therapy, GLP-1s, or a combination of the two? Leave a comment as we'd love to hear your perspective. All right, and thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, and we'll see you here next time at Metabolic Mind, a nonprofit initiative of Bazooki Group.